a, a very unique and challenging year. Uh, oh, the recording just started right now. So uh, once again, I'm Keith Bush. I'm the principal of Parsippany High School. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's been a it's been a really unique and interesting and challenging year, but we're doing a lot of great things. The students are are uh, are having a lot of success, um, and specifically for our sophomores, this is an it's probably been a really interesting experience since this is probably the first time in history that we've had uh, a sophomore class starting after having spent most of their freshman years not in uh, the school building. So it's been an interesting set of growing pains for our tenth graders, but they're doing a tremendous job. So uh, I'm here just sort of to, uh, to watch, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, our fantastic guidance department has a, a, a great presentation for you this evening. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mrs. Stacy Bush, who's our uh, coordinator of guidance, uh, and she'll kick off uh, this evening. Have a great night, everyone. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, we've said this before, and I feel like uh, one positive of COVID is that we have uh, the option. We all sort of have become comfortable with these virtual meetings. Um, so on a night like tonight, where it's cold and dark, uh, this January night, we can all um, come together kind of easily. Um, so my name is Stacy Bush, as Mr. Bush said. We're not related, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, I'm the coordinator of guidance, one of the school counselors here. And uh, the, so the sophomore parent night, just want to give you some background, was sort of we meet frequently and we're very cognizant of the fact that we've all been doing this for a long time, but we want to make sure that people who this is their first time with a student uh, and a child in high school, that you feel comfortable and that you know what to expect um, throughout the process. So. You know, we do a lot with seniors. Obviously, people are always talking about seniors and what's happening after high school. Um, and that sort of trickles down to junior year as well. That's when the post-secondary planning begins. And there's obviously a ton of information and stuff that happens when students transition to high school from eighth grade. But the sophomore year is kind of just sort of like this sort of lost year. But there's, it's always good to review what's coming up, what is going on this year, what to expect in the future, and sort of what, you know, has happened um, freshman year. Um, so like I said, we're very cognizant of, of the fact that you may, you know, this may be your first time with a child in high school. Um, and coincidentally, Mrs. Lech and I both have 10th graders also. So um, not only are we school counselors here, but we're also parents in the exact same position as you. So we're gonna do our PowerPoint. I'm gonna share my screen and we're each going to be talking. Um, if you wanna put questions, what has worked well for us um, after doing this last year and this year as well um, is to put the questions in the chat and then we address them at the end. Um, so just keep your, um, your microphone muted and put your questions in there and then we sort of answer them all at the end. So let me share my screen and get started. Does that look good, Mrs. Letch? You can see that. Just want to confirm. Everyone can see that. Can someone? Yes. Yes. That's good. That's good. I, I can't see you guys, so I could see. Okay. So you're a sophomore. Now what? Um, everything you need to know about sophomore year. Um, so the first and foremost, um, these are uh, the counselor assignments. So your student, your child, has the same school counselor starting in ninth grade. Um, all the way through 12th grade. And the way we split it up is sort of by the alphabet. So Mrs. Letch, who's on and will be speaking, um, has the beginning of the alphabet, A through DA. Um, I have sort of the next section of students. Mr. Douglas has H through ME, Mrs. Robocek, MF through R, and Mrs. Bellarmino has the uh, end of the alphabet. Ms. Doyle, she's not here tonight, but she's our student assistance counselor. So she's also involved with all of the students throughout high school. Hi everyone, I'm Ellen Bellarmino. I'm one of the counselors here. Thank you, Mrs. Bush for that intro. Um, the slide I'm focusing on is the academic piece. Obviously high school, there there's a major focus on academics. Uh, students wanna do well, teachers want students to do well. So 
sophomore year is really a time to hone in on your study skills and focus on perfecting you know those skills and keeping your grades up um really important to be um your students to be in communication with the teachers we talk a lot of um individually with them about not being fearful of reaching out um i say a lot to to the students in my office that you are not bothering the teachers. They, you know, really, they really look forward to hearing from you um, and not to feel um, awkward about it. And it's, it's par for the course. It's that age group. It's, it's uh, sometimes it's awkward. I have two um, kids of my own and my youngest is a senior. And to this day, he will have me proofread emails that he sends out to teachers. So they get really nervous and they don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's so important for them to recognize that the teachers are there and want to hear from them and are there to support. We do have other academic supports in the building. Um, in addition to teachers, which would definitely be the first line of defense, um, there is homework club that meets after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, drop in any time. We encourage the students to do that. Um, there are also free NHS tutors. I happen to be one of the advisors. So there are forms and the, the senior NHS members are um, so excited to try to help younger underclassmen how to do, um, you know, how to solve diff difficult problems and they'll work with them one on one. So if your son or daughter is uh, struggling, certainly reaching out to the teacher, dropping into homework club, and maybe, you know, kind of thinking about an NHS tutor would be the way to go. Um, they can always come to us and we would point them in the right direction. But sophomore year is really about the grind, you know, sticking to it and try to keep going. Um, the other, the other aspect of academics is a transcript. The word is thrown around a lot, but it is simply a one-page um, record of their final grades every year. And every, every at the end of every year, uh, the final grades are printed and their GPA is updated. So um, when you hear transcript, it's really important record of all their academics throughout their high school career. And that's what I have. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Letch. Um, I get to tell you a little bit about course selection. Believe it or not, very soon we will be working with the kids to create their schedules for junior year. We recognize we're halfway through sophomore year and it seems a little crazy, but this is the time of year we have to do it because there's so much planning that has to go into having a master schedule ready for an entire building for next year. So. Just to give you a little bit of an overview of the process, beginning in early February, the week of the 2nd through the 9th, all of your kids' teachers should be meeting with them and going over their recommendations for next year's academic courses. Um, the teachers will talk with them, they'll, they'll, they'll make those decisions. You should know that down the line, if you disagree with the decision and you want to do something, there is an appeal process. But typically, the teachers make great recommendations and they're going to let your children know, hey, this is the level of English you need to go into. Or as a you know math teacher, this is the next math class that you should be taking. Um, they're going to enter that into Genesis. And then starting on February 9th, the portal is going to open for you to be able to view what the teachers have recommended. 99% out of the time, teachers have recommended the, all the academics for your kids. It's pretty much probably going to be five academic classes. They have to take English, math, history, science, uh, phys ed. They probably they are likely taking a foreign language, and then there's some room for electives. The academic courses will be put in. As long as you are in agreement with what's there, leave it alone. You don't have to re-enter anything. It's already there. But what is important is that your children pick the electives that they want. We have room for eight classes in a day or in a schedule. We don't go to eight a day. We go to six a day, but we have room for eight classes in a schedule. Um, kids must take at least six. So it's OK to have a study hall. Maybe you have a study hall in seven classes. That's OK. Um, but we want the kids to take this seriously and really think about what they want to take they're going to enter the elective classes that they want they also need to enter like 
we're going to say four alternates um, because they'll put in the first two that they want in. They should enter these things in the order of their preference. OK, um, we will always try to give the kids their first preferences, but it is a giant matrix that gets put together and sometimes it doesn't work out. So there needs to be an alternate choice. If they don't put alternate choices in, that's where they end up with us assigning study halls and they, their choices get limited. So please encourage your kids to take that seriously. Um, some of the things you gotta think about, there's a lot, there's a lot involved with the picking of the classes. Now that the kids are gonna be juniors, there are some other things that are opening up to them. Um, it's possible they'll get recommended for AP courses. If you don't know, an AP course is an advanced placement course. It's a college level course. Um, they're offered in several different subjects. They are by teacher recommendation only. Um, typically kids in honors level courses are moving on to AP level courses, but there are some that are strictly electives. Um, we have dual enrollment programs and we're going to, I'm going to sh share with you, with you a link to our course selection booklet, which literally has everything you need to know about everything that our district is offering at the high school level. So we have a dual enrollment program with NJIT. Um, there's also something with Fairleigh Dickinson. So depending on the courses that the kids are taking, they could potentially get college credit. Um, on page 10, 11 and 12 of that booklet, you can read all about the specifics of that. Um, when it comes to the schedules, like we said, it's a giant matrix. There's a lot of effort that's put in. Um, and we need the kids to take it very seriously. And we really, really try to hold the line on not making changes once the decisions are made. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. But quite honestly, the entire schedule is built around what your kids request. So the number of classes that are run, the number of teachers that are needed to teach those classes, whether or not a class can run if there's enough people. Um, the entire the entire master schedule, staffing, everything is kind of built around that. So we really stress that they don't that they take this seriously. Um, if they want to challenge themselves in a harder class, that's great. Understanding that it's a challenge and stay, you know, not that I'm just going to give it a try and then give up. We we need to really think these things through, and that's where we need your help in talking to your kids. Uh, as counselors, we will meet with the kids starting somewhere around February 9th, going through March 3rd. We will meet with every single student in the high school. So it takes a while, but when we meet with them, we really want to be able to go into Genesis and look and already see what they want to take. So to help prepare the 10th graders for that, we are actually going into the 10th grade classrooms next week and we are doing sophomore seminars. We're going to do a little bit of career exploration, but we're also going to give them some time to go through this course selection booklet and kind of plan out their next next year for sure, but even in a broader sense, the next two years of the classes that they wanna take. Um, and again, we will sit with them. We will go over to make sure that all of their graduation requirements are being met. That's not the problem. It's just really having the kids think it through because they will get more and more options as they, as they progress through. So um, if the big thing for you after you've done this with the kids and you see what the teachers recommended and you have seen what your kids put in, we would like you to sign off in Genesis that you've seen it. Once you do that, we'd like it to not, not change it. If you need to make a change, give us a call. Um, and we're certainly willing to talk, you know, talk through it with you and, and do what we need to do. But the earlier, the better on all of this. So the month of February really is when we're kind of honing in on all this. And if we go to the next slide, um, this presentation is being posted. These links are kind of live links. There's a link to the high school course selection bulletin. Like I said, it's got literally information about everything from dual enrollment programs to flow charts of what courses you should take in what order, descriptions of every class. Um, literally everything you need to know is in this booklet. And I, I fear that the kids don't really look at the booklet enough. So that's what we're telling you. Um, there's an electives offering handout and there's an elective brochure. One of them is a listing of all of our electives. One of them is a description of all of them. And then there's even a link for the directions for what you need to do. So everything I said um, in detail is there for you. So we're getting ready for it. Um, and we're excited to see what the kids are wanting to take. This, this presentation, I'm just going to interject, is going to is posted already on the main page of the Parsippany High School website. So these links will be active and you can access them there. You can also ask access them through the district site, I believe. And we're going to send them all to the students as well. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Fred Douglas. It's nice to meet everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'll be explaining the options you have with the Morris County School of Technology shared time programs. Uh, those shared time programs are not to be confused with their full-time programs that some of you may have heard about during your middle school years. Uh, these shared time programs are open for students that are in grades 11 and 12. Uh, there are certain openings left for 12th graders to begin, but the majority of these shared time programs are designed for your students that are now currently in 10th grade. They will be um, opening up their link for us to look at and apply, and your students should be ready for this. It's a week from today. On the 19th, they'll be opening up that website. Uh, the link you see on this slide is not the website that will give you that link into the, the registration. It's the link to the main website at the Morris County School of Technology. If you check in the chat box, I entered the link for you directly into the shared time uh, place itself where they list all of those courses and every option. And I'm just going to read off to you uh, the titles of all the courses so you get a, a good idea about what they're offering. This is the list of the courses you can consider that are shared time half half day programs, each one lasting four periods at the School of Technology at the campus in Denville. Auto body and collision repair, auto service technology, carpentry, cosmetology, electrical trades, exercise science, fundamentals of buildings and grounds maintenance, fundamentals of food services plumbing and pipe fitting and welding technologies. Located at the Pequannock High School in Pequannock is the Allied Health Program affiliated with Chilton Hospital. Well, now located at the campus in County College of Morris in Randolph are the programs in criminal justice, culinary arts and hospitality, cybersecurity and information protection, and engineering design and advanced manufacturing. Each of those programs in those shared time uh, uh, applications has different um, concentrations, different requirements, and different expectations. So there's certainly something there for any student that's looking to consider the range of things I just read to you. So we, we support that 100%. Uh, Mar uh, Parsippany is fortunate that we have been supplying the majority of the students into that shared time program for a long time. Not to, that, that does not give us an advantage in terms of the application process, but we're very familiar with what this represents for you. Uh, there are students in these courses from all over Morris County. It's an open application process. We can't really assure who they will select and who they won't. They have their own screening process. We will support your application and try to assist you and your students getting ready. Uh, they may want to consider a fallback plan just in case they're put on a waiting list or the, the one that they're looking for is so oversubscribed that there just are a very limited number of spaces. Uh, so we would look at that as well. But I do want to point out that if you're in those programs, you don't forfeit any of your eligibility to participate in our school activities at the high. You can be part of our school teams, go, to, go on all of our club activities, participate in, in a full way while you're a student, uh, while you're a student shared time at Morris County School of Technology. There'll be an AM bus to pick students up in the morning to bring them there. And there's a midday bus bringing those same people back as well, a bus to take the afternoon students from our school up so that every student who goes for the shared time spends half their day with us and half their day at, up at the uh, Morris County campus. We're very happy to be the strongest partner they have. We've been sending kids there for a long time. It's well worth considering. And any questions, please direct them to the county college uh, staff when you apply. But we will support and assist you as best that we can. If you have any other questions, don't forget that link in the website. Uh, the link in the chat is for the website directly into those programs I read to you. The main uh, MCST website will take you to the, all the full options that they have. OK, thank you. Thanks, Fred. Okay, so the PSAT. Hopefully, uh, you have all heard about this. So this Parsippany School District um, 
you know, is interesting because what happens is the, the PSAT nationally is a test given by the College Board, which is also the same company that gives AP exams and the SAT, which I think everyone's familiar with that term. Um, so every October, the College Board um, gives the PSAT. Nationally, it's give, given on the same day. Um, it's either a Wednesday or a Saturday in October. We give it on the Wednesday. Um, so the PSAT is designed for juniors. Our district and a lot of districts in New Jersey, you know, New Jersey is sort of go big and go, and go fast. Um, our district initiative is we give the test for free to all 10th graders. So this October, um, every 10th grader in the school, unless they were absent, was scheduled to take the, the PSAT and took it um, during the school day. Um, at this point, they should have gotten their scores. They were released the first week in October, uh, December, I think December 7th, they were actually came out. So if you haven't seen them or talked to your um, child about it, remind them to go into their email, look in their email uh, around December 7th and find the email from the college board um, that tells them that their scores are ready. If they can't find the email, they can jump on um, to the College Board website and, and try and create an account and log in. We had emailed all of the information, I believe, to parents and to students about if you were having trouble with your score. Um, so what happens when you get that score report? So the PSAT is really like the closest thing you can get to a simulation of the actual SAT. The scoring is a little bit different. It's not based on 1600. It's a little bit less, but it gives you a feel for the timing and for the questions um, that are on the actual SAT. So it's really the a, a way that you can take uh, have exposure to this type of high stakes test um, in a kind of safe environment um, and for free um, as a 10th grader um, and see kind of how you did. Now, as a 10th grader, it is early to take the test. So if you remember that it's, an, it's a test that's given nationally during junior year, taking it in 10th grade for some is definitely early. Uh, the, the majority of math that's on the SAT is Algebra 2 based. Um, and many 10th graders are not in Algebra 2 yet, or they just started Algebra 2. So, you know, what we always say is to the kids, this is really just for exposure to this type of test. You're not expected to do amazing on it as a 10th grader. Um, you're not expected to know all of the content either. Um, so what they should do though, is they should retake the test as a junior. So what happens in Parsippany is we give it to all the 10th graders for free. They sit during the school day. As a junior, you have to sign up to take it. Um, so that information will go out really when the school year starts next year, um, how to register for the PSAT. Um, you, it's it's minimal, the fee. It's less than $20 usually. Um, I think it was 18, maybe 19 this year, um, somewhere around there. Um, and that's what, you know, the cost of the test where you administer at the same time to 10th and 11th graders. And then you see sort of how your score is as a junior. Um, and that's sort of the standard time to take it. And what's expected is that you, you get your score in December, um, you review how you've done. The score report that comes through the College Board is actually very comprehensive. Um, it's about three pages long. So a lot of times the kids just want to see their score and, and compare what they got to someone else. But really, if you open up that score sheet, um, you can really drill into sort of every question, see where your strengths and weaknesses are. The, the, the score sheet will tell you you know, it rates the questions as easy, medium, and difficult. And you can see, did you have a trend on which questions you got wrong? Did you really get difficult ones right and easy ones wrong? You can kind of try and map that out. What students should do then once they get their score report in junior year is to do their SAT prep over the winter um, when they're a junior and prepare to take the SAT when they're in the spring of their junior year. So the test is offered in May, uh, March, May, June and August. Um, so when they are juniors, um, that's the plan generally. So now some kids may take, there may be kids doing this earlier, but just so you know, that's the average sort of sequence of testing. So speaking of testing, um, state testing is back. Um, so um, the name, I mean, you may be familiar with something called PARC. It used to be called PARC, and then it was called NJSLA. And now it's still kind of called NJSLA, but they call, they have added the NJGPA. 
Um, so what do you need to know about these, these things? So the state testing is a graduation requirement. So it has been a graduation requirement for years. When COVID hit, they had removed the requirement really, I think, logistically in 2020 because you know, no one could take the test. And then in 2021, because really, it was basically, you couldn't administer the test either if the kids were all virtual. Uh, so it's back this year. Uh, the requirement for each year is kind of fluid a little bit, but for the class of 2024, it has been posted. Um, that the first pathway is what's called the NJ GPA, which is now we're back to a test that all grade 11 students will take across the state in math and language arts. So that's the first, first pathway. Um, the second pathway, if you don't meet that requirement when you're a junior, the students are taking, the 10th graders are taking um, a test this year um, in math, if they are um, in um, in algebra, geometry, or algebra two, they're taking the math test this year. So that could be the second pathway. And then the third pathway is the portfolio appeal, um, which is a different process that you will enable you to meet this testing requirement through doing um, tests one at a time with um, a teacher within the building who's sort of tutoring you in those subjects and then testing you, assessing you on your knowledge of them. So why do we talk about this? Not to scare you at all, but just so that you can remind your children to take the test seriously. Um, we proctor these tests, the, the teachers in the school proctor them, and it's not uncommon for students to really sort of rush through and not take the test seriously, not understanding that when they become a senior, this is a graduation requirement. So we want them to take it seriously. The district also uses the data for planning purposes. So it's important to take it seriously. Um, the sophomores, like we said, are testing this, this spring in math. So you can remind them of that when it's the testing time. But to also take the pressure off because we, since I've been here, no one has not graduated because they haven't met this requirement. We get them through one way or the other, whether it's the first pathway, the second or the third. Um, we will, you know, see that they get through it somehow, but we want them to really take it seriously through the process because um, it's just important to do well and to do your best on something that's associated um, with your schooling and your education. Um, so that's a, the testing information. Okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer Bocek. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so hopefully your children have talked to you about a program that we use called Naviance. Um, it's a web-based program and we build upon it every year. Um, so in ninth grade, we basically use it for um, learning style inventories. So there are some assessments in there that your child can take and it can tell them what kind of learner they are. Are they a virtual learner? Are they an auditory learner? And then based on that, you know, how do they learn best? And um, it gives them some tricks that they can use. Um, when we get to 10th grade, we use it for career exploration. Um, we're actually um, going to be going into the 10th grade classrooms in the next couple of weeks um, to do some career exploration um, and self-discovery tests with them. So basically what it does is it takes them through some assessments. Um, we're based on what their interests are, based on what their skills are, based on what their personality is, what careers might be a good option for them. And then this program can help them dig deeper into the career paths that come up. And it comes up with um, possible majors, possible colleges that offer those majors. Um, so there's a lot of research that you can do based upon those assessments. Um, once they get to 11th grade, we use Naviance for the college search process. Um, we've actually been doing that. Um, we started it last week and we finished it up this week. We went into all 11th grade English classes um, and we made sure that they were able to log on and then we showed them how to do a Naviance search. Um, so basically what you do is you put the criteria of what college you're looking for, um, what you're looking for in a college. So, you know, location, size of school, um, environment of school. And then based on all that, we'll give you a list of schools that meet that. And then again, you can kind of dig deeper into that. Um, and then once we get to 12th grade, then we use Naviance um, as a way to send all the paperwork that is required from Parsippany High School to where it needs to go. So whether that's a college or a trade school or career school, everything is done through Naviance. Um, so all students have an account. Um, and you are welcome to ask them for their login information if you kind of want to play, play around on it as well. Um, if they have trouble getting onto their account, please have them see their counselor and we can help them um, reset it. 
Okay, so this is uh, Naviance, and hopefully they're familiar with that term. I think someone had their hand up during that presentation, Jen. Oh, someone have their hand up? Uh, Stephanie Caponegro. Stephanie, if you wanted to unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Okay, we'll skip that. I didn't mean to. Sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, so uh, Parsippany High School has a lot of sports and clubs and activities that we offer. And we tell 10th graders that this is a great year if they haven't already gotten involved in something outside of the classroom, that this is the year to start building their resume. Um, because no matter what they do after high school, somebody is going to ask them, what did you do besides just attending class? Um, you know, when they go to college and they're filling out their applications, colleges want to know, you know, what are you involved in? Because if you're involved in it in high school, then chances are you're going to continue that in college. And those are the kinds of students that they're looking for, students that are involved in something. Um, it's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to learn new things. Um, because everybody has lunch at the same time during the day, a lot of clubs meet at that time. Um, so that doesn't interfere as much with sports um, as it did in the past. Um, we have a daily bulletin that gets emailed to all the students every day, and it lists the club meetings and the locations. So that's a great way for the students to know what's going on. Um, we also have um, large TV screens um, around the building, and that also lists different club events that are happening um, and you know where they're happening. Um, we have everything from gaming clubs to culture clubs to academic clubs. So there is something for everyone. Um, there is a list of clubs and advisors on the website. So if there's a particular club that a child is interested in, they can contact the advisor for more information on it, as well as, like I said, following the daily bulletin that's emailed and looking at the TV screens that are posted around our school. Um, if there's a particular club that your child might be interested in that we don't offer, um, there's a possibility of them starting their own club. Um, so Mrs. Spencer, who's one of our assistant principals, is the uh, administrator in charge of clubs and activities. Um, and they can talk to her about the process of how to start their own club. But there definitely is something for everyone. And we really tell them it's such a great way, like I said, to meet new people um, and learn new things. So it's definitely something that you should encourage your 10th grader to, to look into. Um, you know, we don't want them to necessarily join 100 clubs, but get involved in things that are important to them, that are interesting to them. And we told them, you know, you can put in as much effort or as little effort as you want to if you can't. You know, the clubs don't meet every day, maybe, you know, once every other week or once a month. Um, so check it out. And if it's something that's interesting to you, great. Continue with it. If you try it and you feel like it's just not your thing, that's OK, too. We just want you to try and explore. OK, so um, we are here for you. Um, please, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. Um, our phone number is listed on that slide. Um, if you push number four, that'll get you to the guidance department. Um, please encourage your, your children to speak with us. Um, they can email us. They can stop down. You're welcome to call us. Um, if you'd like to come in and speak with us in person, we're more than happy to do that as well. Okay, so I think we were going to open it up to questions at this point. I wanted to add one thing before I forget. Uh, that is, uh, any of the parents who are here that would like to have a chance to see the Naviance screens themselves, they can email us with their own email address, and we could enter their uh, their name and, and register them so that they too will have access to that same screen and participate in that viewing way to help out and to see as much as there is in that Naviance field uh, with their children. Does anyone have any questions? Well, if you have no questions, you can certainly thank you for coming and um, you can log off. Um, again, we just want to reiterate we're here. Um, you know how to reach us. Really, there's no question that's silly. Um, give us a call, shoot us an email. Um, we're happy to help or answer any questions um, that you may have.
And we'll stay on if someone wants to ask something um, in a little bit. Yeah, there is a question here. Oh. Do you see the question? Can you please talk about what time SAT recommended for 10th graders? Okay, so, so I, oh. it was nice, yeah. yeah. So the SAT is really a junior year test. So there's no need to take it earlier. Um, if your child is in algebra two as a 10th grader, um, they may want to take it. Maybe they want to take the test in the spring because um, they feel like they're ready for it or they feel like they're going to be very busy junior year. Um, but historically, you really you can get that extra practice in with the PSAT as a junior in October. You can prep for the test then um, and you could take it in the spring of junior year. Some kids do take it in the fall of junior year um, if they finish the math requirement. And sometimes really that really just comes down to timing for you. If you feel like you've done your test prep and you want to do it over the summer um, and when school year starts, you're busy with other things and you feel like you want to have that over with, you can take it early, but there's really no need to. It's really just a matter of timing. And that would really only be if you have um, really completed that math class. Um, there is the National Merit Scholarship. So you, if you are an advanced student and you're, you are taking, looking to take the SAT early, there's a good chance maybe though that you're really good and you oh. want to take the PSAT um, as a junior to qualify for the National Merit Scholarship which is a scholarship program just strictly based on your score initially. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. If you don't take the test, the PSAT is a junior, you sort of are opting out of that scholarship. It's very competitive in New Jersey, but like I said, if you're looking to take the SAT earlier, you may be advanced and you may qualify for it. So it's just something to keep in mind. The PSAT results are not published publicly. You have, the student has access to them. So when they took the PSAT, there was a lot of bubbling in at the beginning and they had to put their email. Theoretically, they, I'm sure they probably put their school email. So that's probably where the email went to. Um, so they can, like I said, I tell the kids, look in your email around December 7th for an email from the college board. If they can't find it that way, we can give them an access code, which will help them log in. Like I said, we had emailed all of the parents and the students. It was like three different links. One, if you're having trouble finding your score, one, if you, so just search for an email from me around that time, um, early December, and it gives you videos on how to access the scores if you had not um, been able to do that. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yes. What is the good score on the PSAT? Just want to understand where our kids stand. When you look at your child's PSAT score, one of the first things you can see is how they did in comparison to other 10th graders. So it's really, you know, a, a good score for one child and a good score for another child. Or it's very subjective. Um, so take a look at your child's score and see how they did in comparison to other 10th graders in the country. And then you can kind of get a better understanding of where that is. Um, the PSAT was based on a 1510 altogether. The actual SAT is based on 1600. Um, I, can, I, I, th that stands. I thought it was 1580. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You might be right. My bad. Okay. Yes. When do students, let's see, when do students start visiting colleges? So that's a good one too. All right, so the typical answer is junior year, spring of junior year is really like the push to go out and see the colleges because you're going to apply to college in the beginning of your senior year. I'm a parent right with you all, literally right with you all um, in the school. Can I say that we've never seen a college? No, but have we gone on a formal tour? No. So it's really up to you. If you're in an area and there's a college you want to wander through and see, that's great. We're never going to tell you not to, but we are going to tell you, you should be doing it by the, into the spring of your junior year, if you can. Can I add something real quick to that? Um, 
So, so you're aware, um, and I know this, this comes up in a lot of different capacities, but uh, relative to attendance, a big question is always, you know, what's an excused absence and what's not an excused absence? Uh, one of the things that the district does excuse absences for are college visits, but um, those excused absences for college visits will only apply to students in the 11th and 12th grade. So those are juniors and seniors. So um, there's no hard and fast rule about when people can visit colleges, but certainly, you know, sort of our district policies and procedures sort of encourage those visitations to happen in the junior and senior years. Um, and then, of course, um, those, uh, those visitations will be excused. There's a question about more information on the NJIT classes. So um, we encourage you to go into the course selection bulletin to, to read that. But just to give you a quick thing, this partnership started what, last year, the year before, they're, they start to run together. This is, your, your kids are not the first in this. There are particular courses that are um, available for dual enrollment. So the kids could actually get college credit. So our teachers actually have kind of passed tests and, and signed agreements and been vetted by NJIT for the courses. Some typical courses, pre-calculus, honors pre-calculus, uh, calculus, AP calculus, um, honors physics, AP physics, forensics, honors advanced engineering, and then there'll probably be some future courses. But what will happen is if your kids are, if they happen to be taking those courses, right? Maybe you have an, uh, an 11th, your child's gonna go to 11th grade and be in pre-calculus the math supervisor will reach out to you over the summer that's kelly curtis um, she'll reach out an email and explain that this is an opportunity for your child to, to earn college credit there is a fee but it's a significantly reduced fee uh, from the college college prices um, so that letter comes out to you individually if you're registered if you're signed up for one of those courses so those courses they will keep adding to them but right now it's pretty much uh the pre-calculus and up when it comes to math and the honors physics all of our juniors will be taking physics next year they won't all be taking honors physics okay um and for there's some other options but it's literally page 12 in the course selection bulletin which is you can get from the link in the powerpoint and I believe on the, the district website, there's a tab for the NJIT program too. Right. Um, under the curriculum tab. So you, like Mrs. Lech said, what happens is once we do the course selection, the, they run the lists of the students that are registered for the courses that qualify and they reach out to you then. And it's over the summer is really the deadline of when you have to apply and submit your payment um, and agree to the, uh, to the dual enrollment. Um, um, and the grades, um, the grades are the grades from our school. So they're factored into your GPA as normal. So if the class is weighted, you know, it's factoring in as a weighted grade. It's, it's really the, the course at Parsippany High School doesn't change. It's the fact that the NJIT has given you college credit for the course that you're taking here at Parsippany High School. We just add fairly, we also have a, an agreement with Fairleigh Dickinson. Um, some of our business courses like business organization and management honors college accounting marketing advertising and sales that's also listed in our booklet there's a opportunity to get um dual enrollment what's nice about that is if you if you do choose to do this your child does get the credit it's a college credit so they would get a transcript from njit or from fairly dickinson it doesn't mean they're going to that school it just means that they now have some college credits from there that they potentially can can transfer to the college that they ultimately attend. Um, again, you'd want to list. You'd want to read the letter from the the supervisors that comes out in the summer. I think with the Fairleigh Dickinson, the teachers might share that information once the class starts. I think. But again, it's really based on if you're going to take those classes anyway. So we still encourage the kids to. These are great opportunities, but also take the classes that you're interested and taking and the classes that you're eligible for based on what your teachers are recommending. Um, if I can jump in, there were a couple of questions about the course selection booklet. That was the, the monster booklet I was holding up. Um, there's a link to that in the in the um, slideshow presentation. But if you um, are, you know, are quick to get on the computer, 
you go to the district website um, under curriculum and then click on under secondary scheduling and you'll find the link to the course selection booklet in the middle of the page. So it is updated for next year. Thank you. Okay, so for the early admission um, that's offered through NJIT, I believe, and you guys could jump in here. Um, so what happens is they have to sort of complete certain things along each way. So I believe that's being tracked and monitored as they go through high school. Um, and then at the end, if they've met all the requirements, um, then they will have the automatic um, admission into the school if you choose to go there. And that they had to do that, that was only open in the for the freshmen, right? They had to do that by a certain yes. time. So yeah. we can't- the, the link I just posted has information about the NJIT, um, I think it's called Advanced Standing Admissions Program. And just to be clear, that's distinct from the dual enrollment. Right. You don't have to be in that program in order to uh, participate in the dual enrollment courses. They are right. individual. You could be both. You can be both. And if you're in the program and you're doing the dual enrollment courses, then when you go to NJIT, you will have done many courses at NJIT, which is great. But if you're not in the early enrollment, um, you can still do the dual enrollment uh, classes and get the college credit for NJIT or a college of your choice that will accept transfer credits. I saw a question about who to send the message to to become uh, registered as a Navion's parent. You can send that to me or you can send it to any of our counselors. I'll be happy to do it for any of you. I know if you didn't see, um, while Ms. Bellarmino was sort of doing the visual representation of the course selection booklet, I put in the chat a link to the district website page that has the course selection booklet uh, available uh, as well. Thank so you, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Thank you. Just here to help. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's no other questions, if you think of something that uh, comes up at a later time, again, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, I'm sure we could answer it quickly or have a quick chat. Um, if you need anything else, just let us know. And thanks for coming. No, this was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, teachers. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, let Good us know night. if there's any questions. Reach.